live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering VMworld 2017. Brought to you by VMware and its ecosystem partners. Okay, welcome back everyone. Live here at VMworld 2017, day three wrap up. We're going to wrap up the whole show. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante, Stu Miniman, Keith Townsend. Cube set, two sets of coverage. Guys, great job. We had Justin Warren as well, John Troyer, Lisa Martin. Great team, guys, amazing. Um, three days, a lot of content, wall-to-wall -wall coverage, double barrel shotgun, a Cube content. Amazing. What's left in the tank? Let's get this done. Dave, your thoughts as VMworld comes down to a close. Well, so I missed VMworld last year, as you know, because uh, I was doing another show. Pat was giving me a lot of grief for that. But if I go back two years ago, two years ago, VMware was shrinking. Its license revenue was in decline. Its cloud strategy was in continued disarray. Customers were kind of you know, losing a lot of faith. Ecosystem and, was in and, turmoil. And, and <laughs> the world thought that Amazon was going to completely destroy this company. Fast forward two years later, license growth, you know, 12, 13%. The company's growing, is nearly $8 billion. $3 billion of operating uh, cash big stock buybacks, clarity on the, on the cloud, and I think, and I'd love for Keith's opinion on this, a recognition of the customers that I can't just throw everything in the cloud. Okay, that's one thing, but what I can do is try to bring the cloud model to my data, and AWS, I mean uh, Amazon, sorry, VMware is going to be a partner in doing that. And I think those have all been tailwinds, along with some product cycles and some... And Dell Technologies LA. buying out from the Federation which was taking on water. Yeah, let's, not forget, talk, let's not forget about the Federation EMC owned VMware and that was bought by Dell. People talk about the Dell discount. I'm not seeing the Dell discount right now. What is the Dell discount? What well, the, the Dell discount is because Dell owns VMware, just like when EMC owned VMware, it somehow shackles them and depresses the value. You know, Michael obviously doesn't, doesn't agree all right, with so, that. All right, so, so product focus as well has been not diminished at all. The products are front and center, they've still got the sessions. Guys, on the product side, oh, what's your view? Strong product offering. I really love the message day one. A lot of the response from the community was like, Pat is feeling energized. He has this shadow of what is going to happen post-acquisition. Is there going to be a Dell discount? You know what? VMware, you know, famously five years ago, Pat was on stage and he said he's going to double down on virtualization. He jettisoned Pivotal and we we're all wondering, what is he doing? Proved over the long run he was right. Last year, this year, he's doubled down, not on just virtualization, but on this concept of SDDC and it's finally starting to pay off. We're seeing consistently this concept of VCF, VMware Cloud Foundation on-premises off-prem, and even in AWS, what ironically, you know, three, four years ago, we were like, well, is OpenStack going to eat VMware's lunch? <laughs> VMware has turned the tables and become that OpenStack layer, that, that consistent cloud layer, at least for that legacy type of way to do IT, taking your internal data center processes and moving them to the cloud consistently across their VCAN network and the uh, AWS. So if wow. I get this right, you're basically saying that VMware essentially went from a position where they're twisting in the wind at all levels, to turmoil in every department, every house is on fire, to pulling one major bold bet, rabbit out of the hat, kicking ass, taking names, Pat Gelsinger made, and team made good calls. You know what? I, I, I'm, not a, I'm not a fan of calling what uh, VMware's SDDC Thing, a private cloud, I don't think it's true for private cloud. It is valuable to the infrastructure, but it's not private cloud, but customers love the message. Take what I'm doing now, check an easy box, move it into AWS or VCAN, and, and it, it's, it's resonating. Well certainly Stu's just yeah. giving you the eye daggers because the Stu, the true private cloud report from Wikibon, which has been going viral at the show, it's been the talk of the show, and so everyone's been talking about is Wikibon's true private cloud report. People love that too because it, the message is simple. Take care of business at home, called the on-prem. Yeah, change the operating model, that's going to take some time. Yeah, so my thought on this is, for years we were talking about the stack wars, lately we've been talking about the cloud wars, and 
for the last few years, when I talked to the partner ecosystem, they were shrinking their booths, they were looking for alternatives. Remember Cisco? Oh, geez, fleeing anything but VMware, let's see, we can do this. You know, IBM, who was a big VMware partner, well, they got rid of x86, where are they going to partner with VMware? On and on, HPE, going closer with Microsoft, even Dell, pre-acquisition, how much deeper are they going to go with Microsoft? Now, you know, John, we've been talking on theCUBE for a while, you know, there's Microsoft their stack, their partnerships, their application, where they're putting it. Amazon, huge elephant in the room. When they made the deal, it was like, oh well, you know, Pat's on his way out the door and he's kind of you know, pulling one over on Dell before he leaves. Now, I think we understand a little bit better where this fits in that portfolio of the Dell family. Open source, still something. We've beat on Pat and EMC before that. They're not really open source. They've got a proprietary software alternative that their partners seem excited about. V they, they, they really fumbled around with their cloud strategy for a year. They've got one that, that seems to be going well. We'll okay. see, 4,500 service provider partners, the Amazon thing, we will still see where revenue comes. So that's a good point. Pat Gelsinger was kicking as the CEO now, but it was challenged on his job many times. So props to Pat, he made some good calls. Stayed on course held the line on the direction, did not cave at all, him and his team, they did it. There's been some turnover, obviously we know in VMware, obviously the results are clear, the scoreboard, they're winning. Question that I'll put to you guys right now. Impact of Andy Jassy from AWS here on day one. How, how, how much of an impact was that? He made some statements, and the question I want to ask you on the addition to the impact is, he said, this is not an optical deal. Most companies make optical illusional deals, make it look like they're all in, and they don't really deliver. So, one, impact of Jassy being here, and two, who is he talking about? Well, <laughs> well. the Barney deal? Well, so, oh, <laughs> okay. So, first thing is, I saw, I've always seen that AWS deal from Andy Jassy's perspective as TAM expansion. Big part of a CEO's job is I got to expand my TAM, especially when you see the growth of AWS, and it's slowing down a little bit, even though it's still impressive. He's got to expand his TAM. Well, how does how does AWS do that? Look to 500,000 VMware customers. So that's number one. Barney deal. There are a lot of Barney deals out there. I mean, most. What's he referring to? Because Google came on the stage the next day. I was getting tweets saying Azure. Um, Stu, guys, who's the, who's the deal? Who was Andy Jassy talking about uh, when I, he was looking at the VMware customers look, and saying, essentially, this is not, implying others are? I'm, I'm not sure that he was necessarily throwing shade at anyone specifically. <laughs> what there was is there was 18 months from when this deal went through, a lot of work. This was a lot of engineering work. Talk to the Cloud Foundation team, talk to the vSAN team, the amount of work to actually integrate because we know Amazon actually has an extensive engineering team. They hyper-optimize what they are doing. So this is not some white box that I just slap VMware on and Bare say, metal, yeah, the BIOS, yeah. you know, it works and everything. Where I, I still am a little concerned if I'm you know, a, a VMware employee is customers, I talked to some customers that are really excited about this, the Lighthouse customers, they say, it's going to get my team that loves their vCenter, they love everything, it's going to help them move faster. Yeah. And then you're talking to, oh, there's these services that they're going to be able to use. I'm like, well, how much are they going to realize, oh hey, this is great, and the VMware sales reps are going to just get eaten by the lion while the customer goes off uh, all right, and so tries uh, all these other things. The impact's big then from your yeah. saying, but you won't answer the question of who he's referring uh, I, to. Yeah. You don't think he's referring to anyone. Keith, well, what do you let's, think? Let's look at I like the comment about how difficult the integration was. Yeah. Last year when I read this, I'm like, wait, hold on, what? The AWS, who is notorious about controlling their message, what I thought was funny is that, you know, Andy didn't use the term private cloud, he didn't use the term VMware cloud, he, yeah. in, VMware infrastructure in AWS, which is a math, massive, engineering effort. So from that, they want to, I question whether or not they could execute upon that, but Annie, ja Annie Jassy being on stage on Monday showed the commitment that we're going to make these other services work. The total addressable market of 500,000 additional customers. You don't do this for bare metal servers. VMware has 500,000 customers? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that, that, that's a great uh, total addressable market, but that's not, that's not where AWS is going to grow by hosting physical servers, by selling more Lambda, selling more 
CDN, selling more pass is the key. And it, where VMware and AWS relationship is weak is in that true integration between the two hybrid IT environments. So when you say where's the Barney deals, the Barney deals are, I, I, I think, it's across the industry. <laughs> uh, unless you're getting fully embedded and committed to make that level of investment. Talk about engineering, engineering resources. This yes. comes back down to what the new kind of engagement between biz dev deals look like. So I have you no need problem. to have that kind of level. I have no problem pointing to the Nutanix Google deal, the anything that people are doing with Azure. No one's partnered at this level. Okay, I, Azure is a good one too, because I've heard from startups that have been enticed by the dollars, because Microsoft's been sprinkling some cash on, who have left to go back to AWS because of technical reasons. Reverse proxies, basically clued, software clues just to basically make stuff work. Well, so where do we, uh, how much do we know about the IBM uh, uh, VMware relationship? Because, I mean, IBM so brought it up today. soft layer hosting, right? They've got a lot more experience with VMware. IBM has said, hey, we're, I think they're shipping. They've been shipping for quite some time. So there's an example of, of engineering that had already largely been done that's actually delivering value for customers. Pat probably brought it up because it's a great distribution <laughs> channel for, for him. And I think Keith's right on. Amazon, uh, uh, AWS doesn't speak in terms of VMs. They talk in terms of, of cloud services, like Lambda, you know, database services, you know, middleware, PaaS layers, that's really where they're going yeah. to hook people of, in this community into their platform. Okay, so here's a question to end the segment as we wrap up the show, because this is kind of where it's all going. To me, my big epiphany was the following. Andy Jassy, statesman, Harvard MBA, now CEO of AWS, taking names, kicking ass, huge accomplishment, he's done great in his career, he's only getting better. And then uh, Sam Ramjay, great developer, chops, knows software ecosystems. Not Andy Jassy in terms of the title, but in terms of status, still a solid guy. Two contrasting positions. Running the biggest cloud today to Google brain power, okay? So you're looking at that and you're saying, hmm, where is this going to go? So the question on the table is, what does it take for someone to be successful in today's IT environment? Is I, does IT need to be smarter in business or does business need to be more smarter in IT or both? And does Google have enough IQ in IT to actually make the products fast enough or are they at risk? Well, I'll take the customer point of view. And you know, we always talk about uh, people process technology. The technology is maturing uh, and, it's, and it's maturing pretty quickly but maybe still not quite to the point where the true private cloud vision is where we need it to be but what's going to slow that down is the, the people and process side is going to take a lot longer. Stu, you made a comment yesterday, uh, VMware is moving at the, the pace of the CIO. It's Keith's line he's been okay, using all great week. Line. So. <laughs> and Robin Matlock heard that today. Of course, marketing you know, CMO said, and the CIO needs to move faster. Well, <laughs> guess what? <laughs> they can't. <laughs> so, I thought it was just a, a yeah, perfect but, but that's But that is exactly the dilemma, isn't it? Yeah, it really is. And, and, and it's, it's, this stuff is hard. And cloud doesn't necessarily make it any easier. If anything, it makes it more complex because it's a completely new business model. But what remember the old think? term forklift upgrade? Okay, you don't have forklift upgrades anymore. You have rip and replace, whatever word you want to use. Well, now we Does have lift and shift. Lift and shift, <laughs> <laughs> rip and replace, lift and shift. <laughs> is Google, and this is my challenge to, to Sam, I didn't have time to ask him this question, and I'll certainly do one-on-one -on -one when I next time I see him. Is Google smart enough with IQ and IT? Certainly we know they're smart enough, but do they have enough IQ and IT to really make the transformation, or are they betting on a rip and replace version of a cloud? So, so, so John, no doubt Google's smart, and they built amazing things, that the ripple that Google has through the industry is phenomenal. They spin off whole industries based on what they're doing. Google, playing a very different game than Amazon is. You know, when you talk to customers and how they're first getting onto Google, you know, data's really important, analytics, of course. Uh, a couple years ago, Google was saying, oh, we're just going to be, you know, that, that data analytics cloud. Now, of course, they're, they're trying to be, uh, uh, you know, a big player. You know, Amazon, the company, remember, Amazon isn't just AWS. Andy Jassy fits into Jeff Bezos' great plans. You know, I'd love to hear when we go to reInvent, you know, what's happening at Whole Foods that's impacted by, by, by AWS? They are everywhere. They are, you know, what Walmart did. Talk about TAM know, expansion. My, my wife you know, well, texted me, I Amazon love Amazon. Amazon. Even more. But this is really <laughs> interesting, right? Because Walmart's now using its muscle to say, hey, you're going to do business with AWS? Absolutely. And, 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 and Whole Foods, you're not doing business with us. Yeah. So, so the point being yeah. that digital, 
yeah. business is allowing companies to traverse industries, and now you're seeing it in really interesting competitive lashbacks. So Capital One was on stage. I've said something over the past couple of years that's been controversial. controversial. No one believes me, but I believe this is what needs to happen. Capital One claimed that it's a technology company, they're not a bank. Well, I want to bank with a bank. That's, that's a whole <laughs> nother conversation. But technology is just a tool to get your job done. And just like you know, we had bookkeepers that knew Excel and then eventually Excel just became a part of your toolkit, AI, I talked to Chuck Hollis Oracle about this on the podcast the other day. AI is just going to be a business toolkit that a business user uses. To, to the question, business users will become smarter at using technology, cloud the cloud provider that enables the business user to have at least amount of friction, to use that technology to solve business challenges will win. The question is, is that Google or Andy Jassy who, who has done it with Amazon or some other cloud provider that's eating their own dog food? Okay guys, let's wrap this up. Um, let's go around the table, one word, two words. How do you wrap up VMware's position vis-a-vis -vis as they go forward? Well, VMware's on fire, I think you know, the data center is on fire, the ecosystem is reforming around the cloud, there's a lot of momentum right now. I mean, I'm, I'm wondering, okay, what's going to happen to derail this, um, but right now the fundamentals look very good. Relevant, John. Yeah. yeah. Cool yeah. and relevant again. Yeah, yeah. It's right, you know, cool, we, we can all argue. You know, look, I, I, I liked what I heard with Amazon. It was better than I was expecting coming in. Uh, you know, getting in there, they talked about serverless, they talked about edge computing, something I actually had a couple really good conversations digging into partners doing IOT uh, and, and, and customers looking at that. If, if they can be relevant, not just in the data center, but in the cloud and even at the edge, you know, VMware's going to have a good life going forward. Yeah. Yeah, and I'll wrap it up. I'll, you stole my word relevant, so I'll still, I'll say, I'll go a little bit further than relevant. VMware is still the leader in enterprise infrastructure software. They're not letting that lead go. Yeah, yeah well, but just on that, the, the last thing, they're an infrastructure software company. I think they showed how they can be more than that in the future. Yeah, and my take is smart strategy playing out. Now people are starting to realize the long game that Pat's been playing. It's showing off in the financial results and this clarity and you can see the game playing out, you're starting to see there where they're going to position. So, good job guys, that's a wrap. We want to thank our sponsors. Without sponsors, theCUBE would not be able to come for the three days of wall-to-wall -wall coverage provided to the community. We get great support from the folks on Twitter, we get support from the folks who watch the videos. We want to thank you for watching, and also the sponsors, VMware, Hewlett Packard Enterprise, Dell EMC, IBM, OVH, CenturyLink, Datrium, Densify, Druva, Hitachi, Infinidat, Camerino, NetApp, Nutanix, Red Hat, Rackspace, Rubrik, SkyTap, Veeam, and Zadara Storage. Thanks to all the 20 sponsors. We can go out and bring our best stuff here. Really appreciate your support. Thanks for watching theCUBE. This is a wrap from VMworld. Thanks guys, thanks everybody here. And that's a wrap for VMworld 2017. Thanks for watching. <laughs>